Hello, and welcome to our notes on volcanoes and the factors that affect their eruptions. We're going to actually start with a little bit of a review, but I want to remind you, you can stop and rewind the video at any point in time to clarify uh, your understanding or to have as much time as you need to write this stuff down. So last time, our last notes, we went over the anatomy of a volcano, what the parts were called. So I'm going to just go over it again. The uh, magma chamber here is down at the bottom. The conduit or pipe goes up the middle. We have vents and the whole top part on the top side of the earth is called a cone. Remember the very, very top we call the caldera uh, or crater rather. And uh, so you should have this in your last no notes. You don't have to rewrite it. We also went over where do they form. Um, remember we said divergent plates. Uh, they will form as the magma comes up between the plates and pushes the plates apart, and a volcano can form there. Uh, if we look around the globe at all of our plotted volcanoes, we can see they're right along some divergent plate boundaries here. They also form at convergent plate boundaries. As one plate is subducted underneath the other one, the magma will melt and heat up and form a uh, a volcano. They also can form at hot spots. If you recall, we talked about the fact that here's a fixed spot and the plate is actually moving over it, uh, forming. Here's the oldest one and moving down. So we have three different plates they can form. And in, again, California, we do have a few volcanoes, Mount Shasta being the largest one we have. So the question, though, today that I want to ask is, and here's where you need to start writing, why are some volcanic eruptions violent and some are not? This is a, uh, a mountain, Mount St. Helens in Washington State, and this was the mountain before the volcanic eruption, and when it erupted, it erupted so violently that it blew about half the mountain off. It covered the entire area with, uh, with ash, and you can see here, if you look really closely, there, all these trees here have been knocked over and burnt to the ground with the hot ash. Uh, some people died. It was a horrible, terrible, terrible eruption. So what makes some volcanoes erupt like that, huge explosions, where other volcanoes, like the one in Hawaii, just kind of bubbles up. The main Hawaiian volcano has been erupting for over 20 years now on a continuous basis. No big explosions, just a constant bubble. So the, the um, violentness of the eruption of a volcano has to do with two main factors. The first one is viscosity. And viscosity, honestly, is the main factor. And we'll talk about what it is. And the viscosity of the lava uh, is dependent on what it's made of, what the magma's composition is, and what the magma's temperature is. And depending on what kind of viscosity the magma has, it will determine how many dissolved gases can be in the magma. So let's go over those two parts separately um, so you can see how they will affect a volcanic eruption. So viscosity, let's get a definition first. It is how resistance to flow a substance is. Quite simply, it's how quick and easily does it flow? We look at water, it flows very easily. That's because there's a low viscosity versus something like pancake syrup, which has a very high viscosity and it flows very slowly. So how slow is the flow? That is the viscosity. And like I said, there are two things that will determine what a vis the viscosity of the magma is. The first is, What's the magma made of? What's the magma composition? A high viscosity magma means it has a lot of silica. Sil silica is, um, is a mineral deposit. And if you have a lot of that, then you have high viscosity magma and you get incredibly um, large eruptions. Low viscosity magma means you don't have hardly any silica in it and we get low viscosity magma that just kind of bubbles out of the out of the um, volcano and kind of just flows along down the volcano mountain and 
into the sea or wherever it's going. Think of this as the more stuff inside the magma, the more viscous, the more stuff, like you look at, go back to our old, our last example, syrup has a bunch of sugar and stuff inside of it, which makes it flow slowly, whereas water just has water in it. So it flows very quickly. The more silica, the more viscous it is, the magma is, the less silica, the less viscous. Um, so the mineral composition of magma will determine its viscosity, partly. Now, have you ever taken syrup and put it in the refrigerator for a while? And then you take it out and you try and pour it on some pancakes or French toast or waffles or whatever, and the syrup goes really slowly. But then you put it in the microwave and you heat it up for a minute, and you pour it out and it comes out really quickly. Well, temperature is another factor that affects viscosity. Um, it is because of the density, very hot magma, because it's hot, the molecules are spreading further apart, it's becoming less dense, and the less particles in a certain area means it can flow more easily. So really hot magma be gets a lower viscosity and it flows more easily. Cool magma is just the opposite. The density actually increases, right? Because the molecules are getting closer together. And so it's even harder for it to flow. It has a high viscosity. So we have those two things. We have magma composition and magma temperature that are going to affect our viscosity. Now, if you have, um, you have gases that are in the magma, there are two different types. Primarily, we have water vapor and carbon dioxide. Those are the two main gases that are dissolved in magma. Uh, there are other smaller ones in things in smaller concentrations, but water vapor and CO2 are the main dissolved thing, gases in magma. And if it has a low viscosity, which means it flows really easily, it's probably a very high temperature, it probably has a low silica, that means there's not many particles and the particles are very far apart, that means it's going to let all the gases escape very easily because there's nothing holding it in. All the molecules are far apart and there aren't that many of them. But you get high viscosity magma. So this magma is a little cooler. The molecules are closer together. Maybe it has higher silica content, so even more molecules in there. All those extra molecules trap those gases in there and those gases start to build up pressure and build up and build up and build up until finally pop they erupt so just here's our little uh, review overview high viscosity magma means we're gonna have um, more gas buildup and a more violent eruption low viscosity magma means less gas buildup and a less violent eruption and that's really the main difference between the two. Um, our shield volcano generally has very low viscosity magma. They have very uh, not violent eruptions at all. And that's why they're shaped as a shield, because it just kind of bubbles out and flows off to the side. Versus a cinder cone, which is a very steep cone, generally has a much higher more gas buildup, high viscosity magma, and a very violent eruption. Um, and composite is actually halfway in between. It's a composite between the two. So you get kind of alternating layers of low viscosity versus high viscosity, less violent eruptions versus more violent eruptions. So I hope that helped you understand why some volcanoes erupt violently and some don't. Uh, if you have any questions, please talk to me in class, and I will see you in class.